right. So um, next up is a client, uh, Ruben Alejandro Ramirez from uh, Syngenta Group. Ruben, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. And thank you for being uh, an endorser for the book I, and a supporter. I, I'm grateful for you. And I would actually love to, to get started by hearing your sort of international perspective on DEI, because you live in Switzerland, right? Uh, we're missing your audio. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? There we go. Great. Perfect. So thank you very much. Congratulations on the new book. Very happy to be able to endorse it. And yes, uh, it's been a really interesting ride since I moved to Switzerland and got the role as DEI uh, group head for the Sigenta group. Uh, as you know, we are a very big group uh, focused in agricultural innovation with 49,000 employees. So you can imagine how diverse our group of employees are is so um the international perspective that we have is that diversity and inclusion is such a broad topic and we really need to be able to set the guideline and the baseline for us to be able to address the local needs right uh, having so many employees in more than 100 countries really makes this a big challenge because everyone has a different way of seeing how diversity, inclusion, and equity should be addressed. However, we're trying just to, to get our four business units to work in a very harmonic way where we can all understand how our employees can really bring their true selves to work. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely right. And I think that's a great point because there are so many different ways to define diversity and we're all diverse, right? And so when you add that inter international lens and 100 countries, I mean, that's that's a lot. So what are some of the things that you've learned along the way that you think could be interesting to folks? Well, I think uh, one of the biggest learnings have been that uh, we all want to be able to present ourselves the way we like to be, right? And we would like to have a, a safe, safe space in our workplace to bring that true self to, to our everyday life, right? The other one is that we are all uh, looking to learn uh, with different, uh, in different ways how to really become more inclusive and really to present equitable opportunities for everyone. And one good example was when we have you as our conference for our LGBTQI Pride event. Uh, really, we broke a record on our <laughs> webinars participation. We yeah. got about 3,100 participants. And this really showed me how eager is everyone to learn more about on the represented groups. Uh, and this really bring, brings me hope because uh, we're not only bringing a different strategy or a different approach for our DAI actions, but we're also helping people understand uh, how to be uh, better humans to each other. Uh, and right after the event, I received so many emails uh, thanking us uh, to present this topic, uh, people with relatives, people with direct reports, people with managers, trying to understand better how uh, to use the pronouns or really how to not make anything uncomfortable when people were coming out or not coming out. So I think this is exactly as a corporation what we need to do. We need to bring tools and we need to really give uh, some uh, information about how underrepresented groups uh, are being treated and also how we need to treat them for them to have the same uh, level of opportunities as anyone else in our corporation. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. And honestly, Ruben, I mean, I I have never presented to that many people virtually before. So Neither, <laughs> I mean, to be honest. It was like the, the Q and A was blowing up. But I think it just sort of shows, I mean, 3,100 people attended that live. And so it's, I think it just shows that you've already created a culture where this sort of curiosity and willingness to learn about people who are different from you is is important and is valuable. I mean, that's a, a really high percentage of folks who attended from a company with a hundred, you know, company with employees in a hundred countries. That's significant. So you're doing something right to enable that sense of curiosity and that growth mindset. And I think that's really inspiring. 
Yes, I think the the way to engage more people is to really show how vulnerable you can be, right? And I think that by being able to say I'm part of the LGBT community, tell my story, my coming out story in different forums with different people from Asia Pacific, uh, from Africa, uh, from Latin America, that are probably uh, regions where there's still a lot of struggle to be able to be as open as I am, has really connected with our, with our employees. Also, we have a great uh, team of directors that are just embedding all our DEI priorities in their in their business priorities, and we're relating DNI with with our business priorities. I am a strong believer that uh, just having inclusion and equity in our corporations is the only way to have business continuity, right? Otherwise, we will be just not uh, be open enough to bring the right talent to our company. I mean, just by having the right talent is the only way to guarantee success. So this is what we're trying to do. We have many projects around our talent acquisition team. We also have other projects for us to foster inclusion because it's not all about bringing in, but also to feel to make feel everyone welcome and included. And now we're working a lot in the equity space. Uh, so I think just by acknowledging that we have all felt left out and how this feels always gets us, gets us into the right rhythm to be better persons with each other in our group. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, I and I'm glad that you're you said that you're getting more into the equity space because I think that's a sort of an uh, it's a topic that we're we've only really been talking about for a year, right? The, the concept of equity. So, can you give an example of, of how that's playing out within Syngenta? Yes. Well, as you say, equity is a pretty new space for for everyone. Uh, coming from the agro industry, even DNI is sort of new in our spaces. What we're trying to do is, as I say, bring new tools. We have a new online uh, trainings to talk about uh, cultural diversity. I think that understanding where we're coming from and how our biases were developed and how they were established really help us to set a, an equal platform for everyone. We're working a lot around the accessibility uh, tools in our Zoom, Microsoft Office, and different softwares that we use just for everyone to have the right platform. Also, uh, in all our communication campaigns that we have, uh, which are related to International Women's Day, International Day of People with Disabilities, uh, of course, LGBTQI Pride, uh, we try to, to bring uh, trainings and solutions for people to understand uh, what are the needs. We are also working with our compensations and benefits team uh, just to offer equal payment for equal positions and also differentiated benefits for different populations. Because when you really help our employees to be less stressed on getting access to things that are probably quite easy for represented groups, they really can focus in what they're doing and in their and doing their jobs right and being happy with their jobs. So that's what we're trying to implement in the Sinjeta group. It's impressive. I mean, for an organization your size to be tackling all of these things at once and and doing so in a really authentic way and gaining traction is really inspiring especially in a an industry like like agri like agriculture right that's i mean that's it's I, I would imagine you're you're a leader you're a leader in all of this and you yourself are a leader in all of this so it's uh it's really cool to to hear these stories so tell me you know what about this work what is giving you the most hope what is giving you and bringing you the most inspiration these days so, of course, we're not there where we would like to be. I think, sure. just as you mentioned in your book, this is not a, an immediate solution. It's a step-by-step -step kind of a strategy, and there are many fronts to be covered. Uh, but for me, what gives me hope is that people are really open to change uh, behaviors, to learn more about different, different groups. Uh, the fact that our leaders are now uh, speaking about DNI in their everyday agenda, when they're presenting results, uh, this really brings me hope because I do believe that as corporation or private groups, we have the responsibility to do what some other governments are not doing, or also we have the responsibility to create better communities and better society for our employees and our 360 environment. So I think that just by being, by just having these topics in our conversation and by raising awareness, this is something that we can just uh, 
bring to have a brighter future for the following generations to come. I agree. I agree. That's it's it's very cool. So tell me, have you had? I mean, I think a lot of companies are would love to get to the point where this is something that's happening. DEI is a conversation that's a part of all of the, the leader conversations. So do, do you have a trick? Like, how did you how did you make this happen? Where this is something that is really embedded so deeply into leadership? Because I think that's. It's sort of the best case scenario, but it's not always easy to get there and to have it be, you know, a continual conversation. Well, this is the work of many people, but I really have to recognize our CHRO, Lord Roberts, that you have met. Uh, she has been really uh, interested in bringing inclusion to our group. And, uh, and I can tell my background is in the market, marketing and commercial strategy. I jumped from having a marketing lead, marketing lead position coming to a completely new space on DNI. And this was because I was re I am really passionate about the topic. I'm really passionate about having a purpose and making something better for, for our society and for the world. And I got the opportunity. And this is just how, this is the best example on how we're trying to, to bring equity to everyone, right? And to present the right opportunities for, for the people that have the passion and for the people that really want to make us change. So uh, not only our CHRO, but our CEO, he's completely focused in uh, environmental sustainability, but also in DNI. So I think these are both topics that will really make our business thrive and will keep us um, having the best talent in the industry and just bringing opportunities to new people. Now we're really fostering uh, having diverse um, employees, uh, diverse candidates to apply for our positions. I really want to invite more LGBT people to apply to the positions we have all around the world. We're having different programs. We are uh, now reviewing our ERG strategy for everyone to really be able to feel safe and bring their true self to work. That's our philosophy. Well, I will say that I, uh, if anyone out there is looking for a job, <laughs> Syngenta is really doing so much that's right and uh, I'm really inspired by what you're doing and and by our conversations so far um, by our partnerships so far so far I admire you and, uh, and I'm grateful for you so thanks so much for spending some time with me today Ruben now thank you for having me I'm really happy I could participate we have so many more projects that we're looking to to get in touch with the quality Institute and also to keep promoting equity and inclusion this is not only the right thing to do as humans, but it's the right thing to do for businesses. So this has to be something that has to be embedded in everyone's business conversation. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. All right. Thank you so much, Ruben. I'm going to let you go. 